More rewards for national athletes. Bomb scare frightens Bursa Malaysia. Hi, I'm Suhaila Saifuddin and this is Kapa News. The gifts just keep on coming for our Olympic and Paralympic heroes who were lauded today in a special ceremony in Kuala Lumpur. They received cash prizes and plaques for making the country proud at the recent Games in Rio de Janeiro. Saya hendak supaya kejayaan mereka itu dijadikan sebagai batu loncatan untuk kita meraih kejayaan yang lebih besar lagi dalam bidang sokan. Kita tahu kesannya sokan sebagai unifying factor. At the special ceremony, Amno presented each Olympic and Paralympic bronze medalist 10,000 ringgit, while silver and gold medalists received 20,000 ringgit and 30,000 ringgit respectively. The athletes and chef de missions were also given plaques for their success. Saya dah kita semua ini terus menerus memberi penghargaan kepada mereka kerana pencapaian mereka yang luar biasa yang begitu hebat. Malaysia's athletes brought home three silver and a bronze medal at the Olympics and three gold and a bronze medal at the Paralympics in Brazil. Meanwhile, Najib took to his blog today to post an audio message blaming one old leader for causing disunity among Muslims, eventually resulting in them to split into three parties in the nation. Malangnya terdapat seorang pemimpin lama yang menyukarkan usaha ke arah perpaduan umat dilaksanakan. Sepanjang pentadbirannya, orang Melayu Islam di negara ini berpecah kepada tiga parti atau kumpulan. Kini selepas beliau bersara, beliau pecahkan lagi kepada lima dengan menubuhkan sebuah parti baru. The Premier stopped short of naming the retired leader but it's believed he is referring to former Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahdi Mohamad. In the audio message, he slammed the old leader for being quarrelsome and a hypocrite as he slanders his opponents but then quickly befriends them. Imagine the stress of being Lim Guan Eng's lawyers during his graft case, having to go through a whopping 13,000 pages of documents from the prosecution. Well, case management was due to commence today, but as the thousands of documents were in index, it's been delayed to December 6. Judge Datuk Hadaria Syed Ismail fixed the date after the Penang Chief Minister's Lead Defence Counsel, Gobin Singh Dio, said that more time was needed to review the documents. The first mention of the trial this morning drew massive interest from both his detractors and supporters who gathered outside the Penang High Court as early as 8 a.m. But the situation spun out of control with things getting confrontational. <laughs> Lim had claimed trial to a charge of using his position to obtain gratification for himself and his wife, Betty Chu, by approving an application to convert two lots of agricultural land for residential development in 2014 and subsequently buying his bungalow on Pinhon Road at a below market price. Businesswoman Pang Lee Kun, the former owner of the Pinhon Road bungalow, was charged with abetting Lim. At a press conference today, Lim said he leave it to his lawyers to prove his innocence. Yang kita hendak bukanlah pemain silap masa. Yang kita nak ialah pemimpin yang bersih, yang mana dan juga membela hak rakyat. So, sini kita tentu tidak akan uh, dialihkan perhatian daripada masa utama negara. Semoga uh, saya kena menghadapi dakwaan tersebut tapi akhirnya uh, kalau saya akan buat pembelaan untuk membuktikan bahawa kita memang bersih he added that DAP and the Penang government will continue to focus on abolishing the burdensome 6% GST the National Consultative Committee on Political Financing has proposed that the government table a new law to regulate political donations and funding. In presenting a 32-point recommendation, Committee Chairman Senator Datuk Paul Lau outlined the proposed Political Donations and Expenditure Act. 
So the recommendations uh, uh, is this. First thing is that the crux of the act, it involves the establishment of a controller. Uh, because someone must be responsible for supervising and enforcing the act to make sure that compliance is there. And also, he will be always uh, supervised by a board comprising of credible and trusted figure uh, with no active politician. Uh, donation to political parties and individuals must be regulated and all donations must be deposited in specifically designated bank account. And this practice, mind you, uh, is very common, almost without exception. All countries provide for that. The recommendations also include banning cash donations from foreign sources to parties or politicians and that money from unknown sources to be confiscated and instead used for activities to strengthen democracy in the nation. Separately, Foreign Minister Datuk Sri Anifa Aman has come to the defence of Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, who was widely criticised online for his delivery in English at the UN General Assembly recently. In a statement today, Anifa said focus should have been on Zahid's successful delivery of Malaysia's message in New York, not his accent. During his speech, the Deputy Premier raised concerns about terrorism, Palestine and the resettlement of migrants and refugees. Zahid's daughter has also come to his defence, saying that although her father does not have a classy tongue, he is someone who speaks up for what he believes in. It was a bad day at the Bursa Malaysia building after the company's operator received a bomb threat which led to the building being temporarily evacuated and put on police lockdown. Cops later cleared the building after no suspicious objects were found. The building was reopened at around 3.25pm after a bomb disposal unit conducted a thorough check and gave the all clear. Daripada pihak PDRM memaklumkan bahawa bangunan Bursa Malaysia selamat untuk kita masuk dan juga untuk dimaklumkan jika staf masuk ke tempat masing-masing tentukan jika terlihat perkara-perkara yang ataupun, ataupun jumpa benda-benda yang pelik sila maklumkan kepada anggota keselamatan dengan segera. Terima kasih. Police had earlier sealed off access to the area, including that of the Court Hill Sri Ganesar Temple along Jalan Pudulama. A K-9 unit was also deployed following the bomb threat, which was made around noon from an unknown caller. Despite the threat, trading and the stock exchange had continued as per normal. Dari segi operation, Alhamdulillah, we still continue to operate, unlike some uh, report uh, that indicate that we did not continue or we resume operation after uh, the police punya investigation. Oh, this is by the call centre? Uh, operator. The operator. Operator. It's a very short call. So. The caller mentioned specifically uh, bag or uh, boxers. Oh, tak ada, tak ada. Dia cakap bursa dan apa kuil di uh, sebelah bursa. Although the building has been given the all clear, police are reminding the public to remain vigilant. Police today took a woman back to a gruesome murder scene, her family's apartment unit in Taman Sri Sinar, Segambut, where her husband and two children were found dead. The 35-year-old woman was led to her home, handcuffed, accompanied by cops and forensics personnel. They spent an hour at the house before leaving at 12.45pm. The woman has been under arrest since Monday when the bodies of her children, 3-year-old Chia Kai Zi and 7-month-old Chia Kai Wen, were found in plastic containers while their father, Chia Hing Soon, was found sprawled in the master bedroom. The Fire and Rescue Department released photos on Friday of a rescue effort outside Menara Kuala Lumpur after a base jumper got stuck in a tree. The jumper's parachute was the lifesaver, having gotten stuck in tree branches. In F1, World Championship leader Nico Rosberg of Mercedes struck the first blow of a Malaysian GP weekend with the fastest lap in free practice on Friday, almost half a second quicker than rival and teammate Lewis Hamilton. 
It was a fiery practice session, literally, when Kevin McNaughton's Renault bursting into flames in the pit lane. Pit crew were quickly on the scene with extinguishers, but with fuel appearing to be leaking across hot engine parts, the fire reignited several times and the session was red flagged after just 11 minutes. The Danish driver was unhurt and the session got back underway after a 15-minute delay. In world news, US investigators are working to get the event recorder out of the back of the train which ploughed into the Hoboken station in New Jersey during Thursday morning rush hour. We are going to be pulling that event recorder from the locomotive, which it is safe to do that at this point. So once we pull that, we'll have more information about the speed uh, and braking and other issues. The National Transportation Safety Board will also investigate if the train had positive train control, which is designed to automatically slow down a train that's going too fast. One person died and over a hundred others were injured in the incident. Rescuers in China have pulled 15 people alive from under rubble following a landslide in eastern Zhejiang province after being pummeled by Typhoon Maggie. 32 people remain missing after the massive typhoon made landfall in China, a day after wrecking havoc in Taiwan, killing four. Now, one woman's indifference to Typhoon Maggie has gone viral. Maggie Strang had nothing on this woman in Taiwan who just wanted to eat her bun. Her picture, taken by an Associated Press photographer, was initially carried by the Wall Street Journal and quickly drew the attention of tens of thousands of netizens. The woman has since been identified as a 53-year-old with a surname Dai who feels unlucky the photos are her claim to fame. Surprise, surprise! Philippine leader Rodrigo Duterte has once again said something controversial, this time comparing himself to Hitler. Hitler massacred 3 million Jews. Now, there is 3 million, there's a 3 million drug addict. There are. I'd be happy to slaughter him. At least, if Germany had Hitler, the Philippines would have, but you know. In a rambling speech in Davao City in southern Philippines, Duterte once again slammed the US and EU, which have both criticized his campaign to kill drug dealers. US, EU. You can call me anything. But I was never into, or I am never into hypocrisy like you. Well, you know what they say, loose lips sink ships. That's all for me and the Copper News team. Have a great weekend.